Yeah. All right. All right. All right. What's up, you guys? What's up? First of all, excuse the background that's in the back. Okay. Um, I hope y'all are all doing well today. Now, listen, I was just literally minding my look. I was going to take my braids out today and everything, get it going because I've been having my braids in for almost two months, right? So I was like, let me go ahead and take it out. But I was like, whoo, no, let me let me not take it out. Yeah, let me get myself together because I was looking a little rough. Now, we all know what y'all are here for, and we're going to get into that. But, y'all, what's up? I ain't been here in a while. I ain't been here in a long ass time. I had to, you know, new start, new year, get it going, get it popping. And we got to talk about some things. So I got my friend here, Tanisha. Hey, Tanisha. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't be no, you'll be fine. So, guys, so if y'all don't know, first of all, if y'all don't know who I am, my name is Josiah. I am a um content creator. I'm a blogger. I talk about pop culture and I talk about real all things reality TV. And um we have all seen what actually been going down um the past 24 hours. And I want to come on here and bring Tanisha on the show just to kind of, just to get to know, we're going to get to know Tanisha, y'all. We're going to get to know where she come from and everything that she do, okay? So, okay. So, how you doing today, Tanisha? You doing good over there? Uh, <laughs> it's relative. Good is relative, but I'm blessed uh, to be here walking on the earth. Yes. First of all, thank you so much for giving me the exclusive. Okay, now if y'all don't know, I'll go ahead and give a brief recap. Um, there was the season finale of the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City premiere last night, and it literally went down. Okay. Um, Heather went the hell off on Monica, and I think people were saying this was one of the most explosive season finales on Bravo in a long, long time, if not the most explosive. And during that exchange, Tanisha's name was mentioned. So Tanisha is here to clear the air. She's here to tell her side of the story and really get into what actually um, went down on this whole drama. Because if you guys don't know, there was a whole situation at the season finale with a Monica create a troll page. And, you know, all the women have confronted Monica on the show and like I said, Tanisha's name was mentioned. So Tanisha is here definitely to explain her side of the story and clear the air. But but before we get into that, let me tell y'all. So I've been knowing Tanisha for many, many years. We actually met um, when she was down here in Houston. Yes. So we, you know, we became close friends and we have a whole circle of friends and everything. And, you know, I just really like enjoyed like that's my girl. <laughs> but um, I want to kind of get to know you, Tanisha. You know, for the people who don't really know you, I want them to kind of get to know you a little bit. So what all, you know, Tanisha is a celebrity hairstylist, honey. And um, I mean, she done, she's done a lot of different projects and everything. So how did you get into hairstyling, like doing hair? Um, I don't know. College wasn't for me. <laughs> and... Mm -hmm little boy at that time and I decided uh going to hair school was probably the next I wanted to try um so I went to hair school fell in love with it uh from there I just like worked at blow dry bars my whole career until COVID and then when COVID happened uh Real Housewives of Salt Lake came to Utah and mm -hmm. then uh, I hustled and got connected to the women um and it all went uphill from there. Maybe uphill, but uphill okay. from career. Um, and then we're here today. Yeah, that's a general overview of how yeah. I got there. Y'all low-key, she's low-key downplaying it because baby Tanisha know how to do hair, okay? She is the girl when it comes to, you know, you want to have a blowout. Um, if you want to get, you know, do your, just a cut and style. Tanisha is that girl. She is very blessed and gifted with her hands. She really be killing it doing hairstyle. Okay. 
<laughs> Girl, did you get you a drink or something? You, you No, I need to. I need to get something. Get you a drink. Get you a drink, Tanisha, because you're nervous as hell. This is out of my element. Okay, let's go. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's, let's get it, cuz baby. I'm trust me. Look, I'm the good guys. Okay. I mean, I got you. We're gonna, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna vibe. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna get to know each other. We're gonna, you know. Yeah, it's gonna, we're gonna get into it, but we're gonna have a good time. Yes. <laughs> so my question for you is, you know, now we got a little background of you and you know how you got into the hair. Oh, you're muted, I think. Oh. Oh, there you go. Hello. Sorry, I just put my phone on. Sorry, one sec, one sec. Oh no, you good. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. So, no, you're good. So the next question is, um, how did you actually get connected? Because you know, you've been we I've seen you, I've seen how you work and your growth. How did you get connected on uh first of all, you moved back to how Salt Lake City because you stayed in Houston for some time and then you decided yeah. to move back because actually Tanisha is from um uh, Salt Lake City and no yeah. shade, no shade. I'll be telling um our other mutual friends this. I didn't know black people was originally from Salt Lake. When you think of Utah, when you think of Utah, I don't really think of black people like that. But it's so right. crazy because what I, the, even the times I visited out there in Salt Lake City, it's it's a it's a community out there. I was like, okay, you know, I mean, and I could be honest, excuse my ignorance because <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be like, oh my god, like black people are actually in Utah. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it sprinkles. It's it's getting there. It's getting there though. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna move to Utah. And find me some love. Find me a man out there or whatever. You know. I know about that. Oh! <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'll stay in Houston. <laughs> but um, but you stay. You know, you stay. Um, you're from Utah. You moved down here to Houston, and that's where me and you met. We actually met in Bible study, right? So you actually moved your way. Hallelujah. We went to the same church and we met at Bible study and I met um, our other mutual friend. I'm not going to say her name on here through Bible study. So we all became like we just grew our friendship from there. But I wanted to actually um, talk about you moving back to Salt Lake City. I know um, yeah. Houston, some things in Houston, you know, like, OK, let me just move back home and just kind of reset. Right. And um, you moved to Salt Lake City and then. Next thing you know, you started, you know, I see you started working on the uh, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And you're the one who was actually told me the tea before even the show premiered that Salt Lake City, they was doing a show. Oh, okay. No, I didn't. <laughs> My bad. Well, how did you get on this? How did you start working for them? Um, Real talk. Okay, so... And I moved back home, what, 20, the end of 2019, I think. And I heard the show was coming here in, or maybe I heard that they just got done filming the first season or something like that. I think that's what I told you was that, oh shit, the show is here, bitch. I need to figure this out. Um, so what I did was I, they started posting like potential, like who is, like gonna be on the show, whatever. Um, so all those potentials, I slid in their DMs and I was just like, hey, I'm a hairstylist here in Salt Lake. If you ever need any help, I'm I'm here to have I'm here and happy to help you. Um and that is how I like start I literally messaged all of them. I messaged Jen, Meredith, Lisa, Heather. Um, and I think for the most part they all had glam. Uh if and so they went through their or maybe the media company hired glam i don't remember how it went down but um then season two rolled around and uh aunt's back from um no it isn't okay i had a friend that was doing jen's hair and he wasn't available to do her hair at one point and he was like hey tanisha can you like fill in for me or step in for me or whatever and then i stepped in for him and that's how I ended up doing Jen. Uh, we would end up like splitting, like some days he would do it, some days I would do it, like, cause he wasn't always available. He was pretty booked, still is pretty booked in the salon. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so when he wasn't available, he would just hit me up and I would just go. And then we it just started going from there. So she ended up basically having like kind of two glam teams in a way. Um, but yeah, that's how that's kind of how I got connected to Jen. Um, and then actually, fun facts, um, I used to work at a local blow dry bar out here and she would come in and get her hair done all the time before, way before the show. Okay. Do her hair before the show even happened, but then yeah, anyways, we reconnected. So full circle. Reconnecting in full circle. You start getting on the show, you start working with Jen Shaw. So yeah. if you don't mind, just you know, um tell me your experience working with Jen on the show before everything kind of went down with her. Um <laughs> hair really out show. Um she had another hairstylist um during the show. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So um and then after the first season stopped filming, she had to do a lot of almost stuff like that and I would do her hair for stuff like that um and then she did a lot of photo shoots um and I would do her hair for stuff like that um and then what was the next question oh no no I was just asking like how did you get connected with Jen and like how was that experience oh. working with Jen Jen was interesting Jen was never rude to me um person she was never uh she was, she was interesting. She was always late. <laughs> um, she was always late. like not even just late. I like, mean, we've seen we've seen how Jen be late because she be showing up to the event events late as uh, late as hell. Yeah, be like last one showing up. Yeah, <laughs> but honestly, she the internet that she showed to the assist, I never saw it in person. Mm -hmm. So I didn't ever get that side of Jen. The reason that I even stopped working for Jen um, was actually because somebody showed me a video of her, like, she made, like, a George Floyd comment or something like that. And I actually think it was Monica who showed me that video. Um, and I was like, damn, like, girl, I can't even fuck with you. Like, but anyway, so I just sent her a message and was just like, hey, I think our visions are a little different. We we parted the first time with like, like we're good, you know. We're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, some drama happened. But honestly, like I said, um, with Jen, I could always tell Jen how I. I this is the thing about me, mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is the thing that a lot of the women know about me already. If we've not already like got into not got into it, but like had disagreements um i'm gonna tell like it is to them <laughs> you know what i mean um i'm gonna tell people exactly i'm a straight shooter for real um and so you know i i have had issues with some of the women privately that nobody has ever known about because i talk to them directly we squash it and that's it you know that's what i'm it. saying yeah because i mean when you work on a show and the thing about Salt Lake is a weird place. Salt Lake is such a weird place. We call it Small Lake City. It's like you're connected. It's always that, like, have you ever heard of six degrees of separation? Yes, absolutely. Salt Lake is very much so three degrees of separation. I feel like it's always you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody, or you are indirectly connected to people all the time. Um, And so, yeah, I've had some, like, interactions with some of the women that have not necessarily been the most pleasant, but it's also like, it is what it is. Everybody who knows me knows where I stand with them. You know what I mean? So, um, and now we're good, but, but yeah, there's been times where. But you, right. And I, I definitely feel that Tisha, but I feel, you know, I feel like that at the end of the day, you have to kind of stand your ground in this type of industry because I, you know, I have other friends who are, you know, uh, celebrity assistants and stuff, and that's in that realm. You have to be direct and state what you need and what you want, or people are going to walk over you. Yeah. So kudos to you for actually being there and just saying, hey, like, you know, I don't appreciate such and so this, and you just going directly to the horse's mouth versus everything else. Right. So, that's pretty much dope. Woman here, it's hard to have any sort of, I don't want to be looked at as anybody's 
peon or anybody like somebody that somebody can step over you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and it, it's not in an aggressive way at all it's just that hey i'm here i'm gonna take up space and i belong here just as much as you belong here you know what i'm saying it's not like it's not like a ignorant thing like yeah blah, 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 blah. Nah, it's none of that it's like hey just as much as you've worked hard i work hard too and we right. can you might have more money than me but you can respect me you know what i'm saying yeah so it's more like that than anything, but yeah, that's that's pretty much <laughs> where how I am with these people, you know. I feel that. So let's go ahead and dig deep, um, a tad bit deeper, you know. So I'm trying to okay. So basically, the connection with Monica. Um, how did you get connected with Monica? Did you guys meet through Jen Shaw? Yeah, so I was already doing Jen's hair, and I unfortunately was in the WAP video. <laughs> Do you remember when Jen made that WAP video? Yes, I remember. Yeah, I was kind of like convinced to be in the WAP video. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was the first time I met Monica. So, but Jen was like, Jen didn't even know who she was. Jen was like, invite Wesley May. Like, that's not her, like, we didn't know that it wasn't her name, but... Um, she needed bodies to fill, to fill in for the video. So who the hell was Monica? Like, was she like a, so, I mean, was she in the industry? Did she, was she a personal assistant or she was just a friend of a friend of a friend? That, I don't know. I don't know how her and Jen met. What I heard, I, this is alleged. I don't know how they met, but, um, what I did hear was that she was like in her DMs and met her that way, but I don't know. Mm. For sure. Um, that can't be confirmed or denied, <laughs> but uh, that's what like slid in her DMs and was like, um, a fan, you know what I mean? Yeah, so you know? so it was clear that Monica, I mean, it's clear that you know, y'all met you met Monica through Jen Shaw, but Monica was also, you know, I guess from Salt Lake City or living in Salt Lake City, and she was another big fan of the show, yeah. 100. Okay. From what I understood, I don't, I didn't know her at that time. We like, like Kiki at that, that night, that night was crazy. It was just like a long night, a long day. Mm -hmm. Cause I'd been all day that day, like doing her hair, waiting for her to show up, all that stuff. Um, so it was just a long day in general. And then we, yeah, we showed up at the house. We did the video, we kiki it was cool. And then next thing I knew she was Jen's assistant. Jen's assistant. Okay. So through that, so y'all connected through that way, her being Jen's assistant. That time, Jen did not know her name. Jen was calling mm -hmm. her. Jen did not know her name was Monica. Not Jen not knowing the girl name, and she hired her for her assistant. Yeah. But I, I'm sure she figured it out after. I'm sure she was like, I'm Monica, actually. <laughs> but, yeah, she didn't know. Not Jen. Girl. What? Jen was yeah. <laughs> now, I I mean, if I'm being real, I could never hire anybody that I knew was actually, you know, that I mean, that I didn't know their name. I think she was just willing to have people that were willing to help her. Because it was the beginning of the, you know, the franchise and she, I guess she needed a team of people around her. I guess. So how did you, so doing that, were you and Monica becoming close? Like y'all just became close friends no. or just, how did that happen? During that time. Um she would hit me up and then as as i was working more and more like as monica was around then i started becoming closer to her okay yeah so um like i don't know maybe i don't remember when we filmed the wap video but maybe i don't know a month or two later we started to become started talking more and becoming friends mm -hmm. and just like you know, there was there was like a time where Jen did not like her hair. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what to do. Like she had put a weft right here. Anyways, long story short, she had a, she had a weft right here on the side of her head that she wanted, but it was placed weird. So it was placed like where we couldn't lift her hair up and give her a ponytail. It was just a whole thing. But um, anyways, Monica did have my back during that moment. And I, and I was like, okay, this girl's a real one. You know what I mean? Okay, like she's cool. Let's. So that we started becoming friends for real. So yeah, so y'all definitely grew a friendship from there. So um, 
So the next thing is the whole situation with Jen happening. We all seen it played out in the blogs and on social media um, with everything and the fraud case. And it was, you know, it was crazy. It was definitely crazy. Um, a lot of people were, hmm? I said it was wild. It was wild. It was wild. A lot of people were definitely shocked by Jen Shaw uh, fraud allegations, allegedly, and people were going haywire. So now at this point, um, you know, I think that people were seeing Jen for who she really were. And can you kind of just walk me through that whole situation? Like you, I think. Nowhere near Jen when all that was going down. At that point, I had not worked for Jen for a long time. A long time. It was after. Arrested. But by the time she was arrested, I hadn't, I hadn't been around Jen for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um. And Jen had done some like funky stuff on Instagram. So me and her had got into it, not horribly, but just we had like got into a little text back and forth. Yes. Um, but nobody knew about it because we kept it private. So <laughs> did you um did you tell Monica about it? Or did you confide in her? Oh yeah, Monica was fully, yeah, fully aware. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Got you. So um so around this time, I'm, I'm assuming that Monica felt some type of way as well because everything that was going on. Can you walk me through that? Like what actually, why, you know, what happened between, if you know, what happened between Monica and Jen and what prompted her or, you know, you all to um, start the, the page? Okay, so I'm like, okay, let me think about the timeline. So I had quit on Jen. While I had quit on Jen, I was already in a group chat with Koa and Monica and then another assistant and another person who works with Jen. We had already just been kicking in general, right? Just as like, talk, like we would talk because of Jen, but then mm -hmm. in general, we just started talking, right? And then, um, so, okay, I'm trying to think. So, she, I quit Jen. We were already in this group chat. A couple of them were already was still working with Jen. Monica and Koa, they were still working with Jen. Um, all of a sudden in the group chat, the conversation starts changing to like Jen is abusive. Jen has done these things allegedly. Jen has done these things um, to us, and the conversation started shifting to that like. And they were like, we have video, we have audio, um, we have all this shit. Because mm -hmm. um, Monica was Monica had two phones. So she had her old phone and then she got a new phone. So on her old phone, she had a bunch of recordings of Jen. And then she started playing them for us. I was like, wow, this is horrible. Jen would talk to them so crazy. Um, and then the video was pretty damning. It was like her yelling at I think it was Koa and this other girl that was involved too. Um seen on the I'm pretty sure everybody's seen it reposted yeah. on the blog. Yeah. Um if you haven't go check out real please <laughs> just kidding. Um <laughs> but yeah so so they videos and I was like wow oh. I was like and then Jen owed them money. Mm -hmm. But I would tell them all the time like listen then it's gonna take a month to pay you maybe maybe two months to pay but like I would request my money and eventually I would get paid you know so I would tell them all the time like just request your money like just request your money like you can complain about it or you can just request your money but like, she owes us so and so much money she's done this and that and da 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 and so then it came to um them being like we're gonna expose her and I was like well so I'll Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, no, go ahead. So, um, so basically, it was more of a situation where she worked with them. She wasn't paying them. Versus, you know, versus you being direct with Jen. Hey, you owe me this certain amount of money. Can you please pay me? Sure. They didn't. They never. They never confronted Jen about their money and decided just to start exposing Jen. I think. I think Monica asked her for her money. One time she told her there was something wrong with her car and that she needed the money to like, instead of just saying, hey, 
you here's my invoices you owe me this much money here's my receipts i think that's how it was um mm -hmm. i would have to think back on my text messages that i have but but yeah supposedly the only time that i even requested i don't know i don't know how often she actually spoke to jen separate um because her like i said i did hair and i left so whatever i heard about jen came from them because i wasn't there like that and like I said, Jen never acted crazy in front of me. She never raised her voice, nothing. Like, mm. never, never anything. Like one time, Koa and Monica got in a fight with Koa's ex-boyfriend while I was there. I could tell Jen wanted to flip the fuck out. She never even raised her voice. But I obviously know she's capable of it because I've seen it and I've heard it through. Yeah, I mean, we all seen Jen go cray cray on TV. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. So we know that she's definitely capable of that. So when they said it, it was no question in my mind. Like, yeah, she did that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so I was like, dang, that's messed up. And but hindsight is 2020, right? Like I was thinking about it, like the way that I did not listen to or notice what was happening around me as far as like Monica would go back to Jen. Like she went back to her like three times and I Eventually we were like, like after she's claiming abuse, right? I mean, and like not to even downplay because abuse victims, we know go back to their abusers multiple times. So, I mean, we get it. Um, but yeah, she went back like a couple times after everything. And even after this page was already started and ran by Monica, um, she went to dinner. Okay, remember how at BravoCon, Andy was like, we've been looking at her for a couple years? Yes. Okay, the reason she didn't go on the first time, what from what I've heard from Monica, is that um, she told me that she her only way on the show was through Jen. And mm. so... Jen, so she went after the show was ran. I mean, after the, all those receipts where Jen was exposed, reality von tease, she was already like in the thick of it and everything. She went to dinner with Jen to try to get on the show. Right. But I'm right. like, girl, but, and I would like get on the phone with her and I'm like, girl, you literally just went through all of this and like ran this page. And I would tell her all the time, like, what are you going to do when von tease comes out? Like, you know, like, it's gonna happen like it's gonna be exposed like i didn't think it was gonna be me that ended up having to do it but um she would not stop running the page literally she would mm -hmm. not and i like i said i was around for like the first i was around in the group chats for m majority of it right and then as people started like winging themselves out i started like winging myself out too and probably like i don't know a month later maybe a month and a half, two months later, I was like, all right, this is enough. Like, we just got to stop with the Jen stuff. Like, and at this point, Jen is arrested. I'm like, y'all are going to get your karma. Like, her karma is that she got arrested. Like, you can't, you know what I mean? You can't control what happens from you. And what, like, when was this, like, so what timeline was this around, Tanisha? Was this, like, a couple years ago? Or, like, when was when did this happen? So, okay, so the page was started... Uh, earlier, March of 2021. Mm -hmm. And we can get back to where the page was started too. I can back back to that. Um, do you want me to go back to that right now? Let's, yeah, I was just about to ask you that. But before you do that, y'all, listen, it's almost 350 people that's in the chat right now. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe the content. This is an exclusive of what actually the backstory of what went down on the season finale of The Real House uh, Wives of Salt Lake City. So be sure to share, like, share um, the content, okay? But let's go ahead to, yes, I was going to say, let's go to the backstory of how this even started. Um, okay. Um, they were super pissed. One of the other participants had quit. I had already quit. Cohen, Monica, I don't remember how Koa, I mean, I don't remember how Monica and, I don't remember how Monica and Jen stopped talking, but mm. I want to say Jen just kind of stopped talking to her without an explanation, but I don't remember totally. Um, but 
so when Jen, um, when Monica and Jen parted ways, um, when Monica and Jen parted ways, she was pissed. Cole was pissed and upset about how he was treated. Um, and then the other girl was pissed about how she was treated, but she wasn't there as long. Um, and I was like, I'm just here because I, I just did the hair and left. I didn't really experience any of that, you know? So I was like, at this point, y'all are my friends. And like, this is fucked up. Like, she shouldn't be treating you guys like this. Like, I was hyped. I was mad for my friends. You know what I mean? Like, like who the fuck throws chili on somebody? Hot chili, you mm -hmm. know? Or who the fuck throws nachos at somebody? Like, this is what they said happened to them, which I think that there's like, I mean, obviously, there's a video whenever she threw whatever she threw, but, um, but, so I was hot. I was hot for them, you know? Like, I was mad. And I was just like, wow, this is so fucked up. Like, who treats grown people like this? But not in my mind thinking, what grown people stick around for this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, in my mind, I was just mad that this happened to my friends, but not thinking, why are my friends still here? Right. Like, you know? Oh, exactly. Last woman would throw chili at me. Yeah, I feel that. So with this whole page getting started and everything, Monica was like, hey, listen, I'm going to start a page. We should start a page. Let's get in on this. Let's expose Jen Shaw. And like, okay, so that group of friends that was in that group chat, we would meet up for dinner and like hang out. Not a close connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we were at dinner one night and I don't remember who said, like, let's expose her. And then I just remember being like, Okay, but expose her how? Because mind you, I don't even like posting my own work on my Instagram. So mm -hmm. uh, leaking a video on Instagram isn't my first thought. So um, someone said, like, we can leak it on Instagram. We can start a page. We can leak it on Instagram. And then everyone was kind of like, okay, all right. Um, and then I was like, but why, did you guys ask for your money yet? Because if you guys, I was like, I promise you, like, you, it may take you a long time to get your money, but you'll get it. Like, at least ask for your money. Yes. You know what I mean? Before you do this. And they're like, no, like, she owes us, like, type of thing. So, anyway, so I was like, all right, well, this is what y'all want to do. Like, let's go. Let's do it. So, I want to say, like, that next day or maybe after that dinner or maybe, like, a couple days later after that dinner, Mm -hmm. um, mind you, the people who had the videos, audios, all that shit, Monica and Koa, that's it. Because I wasn't there. You know what I mean? I literally was not there when any of that happened. Um, the other girl, she was there. She was there for some of it, I believe. But I don't know what she was there for. Um, the other girl that was there that was like me, she just came and gone too. She was also a part of the glam. Mm -hmm. So glam team, we just came and gone. We are just supporting our friends who went through this. Anyway, so um, where did I stop? <laughs> no, no, no. So let's, so, okay. So that's that gives us a lot of insight because I'm going to be honest with you, friend. Uh, well, Tanisha, a lot of people felt like, you know, of course, Monica threw you completely under the bus, child. And it made it seem as if you were the only one who, you were the main ringleader who right. actually had the page when that's not true. No. You know? Um, it because it seemed like, now, do you take accountability for, you know, with the beginning of the page, getting it started and everything that happened and you just knowing what's up? Yeah, I feel, I think that's what I feel the most guilty about. I feel like the most guilty about the fact that I fucking knew everything and I never said shit. And I kikied with these people. Like, you know what I mean? I didn't, run the page. I never made one post on that page ever. Mm -hmm. Never. Ever. But I was fully aware of it. This was before I started working for Heather. Then in the middle of that page being ran, maybe a month or two later, um, Heather reached out and asked if I could glam her. And I was like, hell yeah. And I even texted in the group chat, like, you guys, guess what? Like, Heather just, because I'm still thinking these are my friends, so I'm, like, celebrating with my friends. Like, Heather just hit me up. Like, I, I have an opportunity to to glam Heather, like, and I had just quit working for Jen, so I, and I had just had, like, a little taste of, like, higher-end client, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I hate using that term, but that's the only way that I think people understand. 
So I had had that little baby tiny taste from Jen, which was right. very. <laughs> um, and then Heather hit me up, and I was just excited. And at that point, I was coming off of another campaign that I helped assist with that was kind of big um, in LA. And I was like, hell yeah, I can raise my prices now. I can charge like what, you know what I'm saying? Like it was just a great yeah, experience. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So and Heather paid you on time. You paid me on time. <laughs> Honey. <laughs> Heather pays you all the time. You don't have to wait six, seven months for your payment, huh? And she paid me my full rate. And so, um, so yeah, so then I started working with Heather a little bit every so often. Never, it wasn't too much in the beginning. So in that time when it was like sporadic, I was still dealing with them. Um, and even in my personal friendship with, with Monica, I would tell her all the time, like, girl, I don't want to hear about housewife stuff. I don't want to talk about housewife stuff because every time we talk about housewife stuff, we didn't agree. And so we would always fight like that. Like, our she team. always bring up the housewives and say, always. Her opinion on the girls. All she wanted to talk about was the housewives, like, ever. And I'm like, girl, I do not want to talk about it anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, let I cannot talk to you about it. We're never going to agree. We're never going to. Eye to eye with these things, so like, let's yeah. just stop. But back to the page. So, um, started working for Heather. I was like, at that point, I was call back. Um, Monica was like, in it, she was in it. And whatever you see as reality of aunties now, it wasn't just that, there was there was stuff about the other women. Um, and she was looking always, into that soon, yeah, yeah. And, um, anyway, she was always looking for dirt on the other women. And, uh, but yeah, it was like, they were in the thick of it. And I was just kicking in along. Like, eventually I stopped kicking as much and then lo a lot less and then a lot less. And then eventually I was like, okay, y'all, I can't do any more Jen stuff, especially after she got arrested. By the time, so March, by the time, I don't know. I think I started working with Heather, maybe spring, fall of 2021. Like more. Okay. So just to clarify, Tanisha, before even, you know, after the whole Jen Shaw and, you know, the dragon of Jen Shaw, you was like, hey, I'm out. I don't want to do anything else. I don't want to hear anything or I don't want to be any part of this um, page. Right. Well, not even necessarily like that. I was just like, guys, I love you as friends, but we can't do, I can't do the Jen stuff anymore. You know what I mean? Like it was just a lot. It was all day. It was just draining, you know? So by the time the other women was being discussed, you was already out. Yeah. I was, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's I, where the confusion comes from. Yeah. And I think that is probably where the confusion comes from. But yeah, no, like, like I said, and then after that, I was like, all right, like y'all did what you needed to do. Koa had gone on that um, documentary. I'm like, I feel like they had reached out. She wasn't an informant that was thought out she reached out to the detective to give information Ooh, yeah. um so like you had already done been in talks with the with the agency or whatever in about jen's case you were already you already placed yourself in the center to testify um against her for what i don't know um like maybe her character, I guess, because, mm -hmm. oh, she said that she had offered to start her a business, which I don't believe anything that that girl says. So who knows if that really happened or not. Um, but Jen would say little stuff like that all the time, but not, she wasn't like, start this business in your name. She was just like, hey, Tanisha, like I have, I think you should start a product line. Like I can help you with that. Like that's how she was with me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, put this business in your name, girl. Like, you know what I mean? I got the money over there. Like, it wasn't nothing like that. It was, for me anyways, it was like, when she talked to me, it was like, hey girl, I think that you should really start a business and we could do this product company. We can collab type of thing, gotcha. you know? So anyways, um, so yeah, D Monica did not want to stop posting on that page ever. She never wanted to stop. And I was like, girl, are you still, like, we would always ask her, like, girl, are you still doing this? Like, even a year later, girl, are you still doing this? By the time, by the time October rolled around, I was like, all right, I'm, I, I gotta leave the chat. October like, 2021. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was like, I gotta leave the chat. This is a lot. 
and even after that, she still was posting on that page, like still posting on that page. I'm like, girl, I even have um, pictures of our DMs. Like, am I talking to myself in the DMs? Am I sending myself memes? Am I, you know what I mean? Am I fighting with myself in the DMs? Because make it make sense. Yeah. I ran the page, right? But no. And I'm not, you know, listen, Tanisha sent me the DM. Like she sent me a whole folder full of everything that went down. And we do have the DMs. So, um, <laughs> I mean, it's whatever at this point. We can, like we can debunk. <laughs> We can debunk <laughs> the allegations. You know, I'm, I'm game for whatever, but I know we're going to, I guess Let's we'll hold off on that. Let's debunk from there. Let's debunk from there? From reunion. From reunion. She's, mm -hmm. she's got her burn book, remember? But mm -hmm. I got a burn book, honey. Just not printed out in scrapbooks. I just got it in my you phone. Have a, you have a, <laughs> yeah, you have a folder on your phone, child. Yeah, actual facts, not doctored text messages. Let's be clear. Um, <laughs> child. The girl loves to make up. Okay. Period. So I, I, I definitely, you know, because at this point, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, you know, people are Monica. You know, threw you under the bus on the show, and now people are saying that you are the one who started this whole thing, and the receipt said differently. Yeah, I did. You know what I mean? So, I never made one. I never made one post on Instagram. I never did. I never did none of that shit. I just supported right. supported the the folks. Exactly. Um, but yeah. So I mean, I I was like, for sure, I was like, yeah, you should post it, or like, no, don't post that, or like, that's a little sus. Are you gonna do that? You sure you're gonna do that? You know what I mean? Like, I would do something like that, but it was never like. Okay, at three o'clock, I'm gonna go post this post. Like, you know what I mean? It was never like that. Like, let me find this dirt on so and so to post it on Reality Vontees. No, that was not even my MO. I could care less. I was busy. That's when my career was starting to pick up. Uh, I was starting to get booked. So, really and truly, a lot of times in the chat, as you saw, I wasn't even interacting because I'd be like, I gotta hit you guys up later. I'm busy. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so it's just, I don't know, it's a lot. It is a lot. And I'm um I mean, yeah, this whole situation is very messy. Fair. So after that whole situation, so after that, after you decided to, you know, um be like, okay, I'm I'm good on this. What yeah. happened between the friendship of you and Monica, if you would like to expound on that? Um, but um, if you if you wouldn't, I'm I'm cool with that too. We can move along. But I just wanna know, can you just give us like the cliff notes of what happened? I'll expand a little bit. It was petty. It felt petty in the moment, but then I realized, no, actually, it's bigger than this situation that it happened over. It's the fact that you always fucking lie. You know what I mean? And it was like, there's been times where we've been in really bad fights and I've let her manipulate her way back into my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's calling me at, at night and being like, my daughter got hit by a car. Can you come up here? You know what I mean? And I would be like, mm -hmm. but then she, but then instead of it, I don't know. I don't know what kind of spell I was under. <laughs> I was just like, I was just like, okay, I mean, fuck, I guess. And then she's like, like, well, she kind of made a joke out of it. Like, oh, well, I hope she hasn't read the or something like that. And I was just like, and then I laughed at like the fact that she was a fucking idiot. Like who says that your kid is going to get hit by a car? Who says that? She lied about that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who's, who does that? I'm like, literally, she sends me a text message. Call me. It's an emergency. But then she told somebody, oh, I did that as a TikTok prank. No, you didn't. You did that because we got in an argument and I wouldn't talk to you. It's manipulative. And so there's things like that that would always happen that I would just like, whatever. You know what I mean? But this time I was just like, no, I don't have to deal with that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I are truth I respect my friends, regardless of how bad the truth is, to tell me the truth. You know what I mean? And that is the friend circle that I was starting to create. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And I just feel like now that I look, I just feel like we always bumped heads because our energy didn't. You know what I'm saying? Our vibrations weren't the same. I was focused on 
building a career for myself. I was focusing on creating a business and a, a path for me and my son. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, my priority is my kid and my money. And that pissed her off. Really, right. I think it like even especially the fact um she hated that I rode for Heather and I rode for Heather for her like in our arguments I fucking rode for Heather that was my girl you know mm -hmm. what I mean um and because Heather has always treated me and my son like gold so I was like there's nothing that you can tell me to make me change my mind on how I feel mm -hmm. about her. like nothing ever and this was long before she got on the show this was, yeah, guys. So we're back. We're back just to kind of update everybody. We're not even with we're not even talking about Monica being on the show at this point. We're just talking about what actually went down with the whole yeah, the um the page, and then also just kind of getting the insight on a breakdown between Tanisha's and Monica friendship. And um, I do have a question to ask you, Tanisha. Somebody asked in a question because you know we mentioned her about lying, um, about her lying, getting her daughter hit by a car. Um, one person asks, um, does she actually have family? Um, and Berna, hope I said that. Sorry. Yes. Is, does she have family I, there? Or? I, I don't know. <laughs> I honestly have no fucking idea. I never, I never heard of her talk about anybody in Bermuda, but she could, who knows? She maybe has mm -hmm. a third cousin out there. <laughs> Oh my God. Another question said, um, how does Tanisha feel about being about Jen being accused of clocking Heather in the eye? Or does she believe Jen's story on IG saying that she didn't hit her? What do you think? What do you think I think? <laughs> Heather is my girl. And I'm gonna rock with Heather. And whatever Heather's truth is, is what her truth is. I was not there. Um, I don't. I actually don't travel with Heather for glam. I just stay here locally and do her hair. Mm -hmm. Local, no idea what actually happened. And it, and in all actuality, that Heather will take that to the grave. Heather never told me what actually happened. I never knew. And I I found out with y'all on TV. <laughs> like I literally never knew. I never knew the story behind it. And honestly, I never had the desire to ask because this was a point of contingence for my client. And I'm there to, as her, as her provider, I'm not there to judge her. I'm not there to uh, get a story out of her. I'm there for her to have a safe space and feel comfortable. And most of the time we're in her own home. What do I look like asking her that in her own house? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I just, never, I never even touched the subject and I let her truth be her truth. And I just, trusted what she said as in or didn't say rather i just respected her peace you know what i mean i respected okay. her peace. okay so let's let's fast forward um to you know uh monica actually being on the real housewives of um, salt lake city now how did that go about do you know how that go about when that um or were you guys just not talking at that time can you kind of just walk us through that we're actually friends until easter weekend it's a weekend. Okay. Yep, yeah, friends. Um, but yeah, I didn't. I knew she was applying for the show. Uh, if I'm being honest, I did not going to make it. But I'm not God, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, I didn't think that she was going to make it because I knew she didn't have money. Like <laughs> real shit. I'm like that's not. Yeah, we saw that by that damn chime card, honey. That chime card, okay. I got a chime card too, but I just use it for my <laughs> spending account. You know what I mean? And when that card got the cloud, and it's not, ooh, they ate her ass up. It's not even. <laughs> it, it, I don't money. like. You know what I mean? I have money, so I'm not. I'm no one to judge you, but. Uh, -huh. we, uh, but yeah, I mean, I I was shocked. I didn't know. I mean, I. Okay, even at one point, I was. I was like, just, you know, encouraging her, like, cause she was like, I don't think I'm going to make it. I don't think I'm going to like look at my house. I'm like, girl, it's fine. Honestly, like you make fucking lemons out of lemonade. You, if your house is not what you want it to be, make it what you want it to be. Like, you know, just encouraging her. Like you got this, like stop thinking so negatively, live in gratitude. You've made it this far. Like walk in that, like 
obviously, if you've made it this far, there's something that producers see in you that they want to hear. You know what I mean? I don't know how long. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was like, okay, well. And actually, I didn't even know that she made it to the show because we were such best friends. She didn't tell me that she made it to the show. Heather told me that she made it to the show. Mm. So, but best well, friend. Y'all was girls. Y'all was girls. Y'all was homies. We were homies. We her best friend that didn't make it to the show. So we were still friends. Right. Now, I want to just address a rumor report, Tanisha, and you have the right to address this if you want to. People are saying that you're trying to get on the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, and you're trying to. That's why when you're yes. the product, you're trying to come on the show, girl, they say you're trying to be, they're trying to, they're trying to say you're trying to be the first Black housewife on the show, honey. Because you know, Ooh, I wouldn't want to be Mary Black. Another Black Mary Mary. Mary. Another black girl can have that. Another black girl can have that because I don't want it. I don't want no parts. I don't want to try to be a part of the show. And you and Monica worked your way, and you was mad at Monica because Monica was the one who blew. Wait, uh, you know, can you hear me? Yeah, re say it again. No, so people were saying that you was trying to work your way on the housewives, and you and Monica both, and Monica was the one who made it, and that's how you was mad at Monica. <laughs> <laughs> they said you was mad at Monica, and that's why you start spilling the tea. <laughs> oh, okay. so do you have any any? Do you have? Do you want to address that? Yeah, or a comment? Okay, I would never apply to be ever. So no, that if I am cameo, I'm working and I'm going home. <laughs> I'm not interested. I want no part. I want to do hair. I want to go home to my kid and sit on my couch where y'all see me talking up from. That's where I want to be. I don't want to be nowhere near the show. Promise. Okay. Promise. <laughs> That's what they said, honey. You trying to get that snowflake. You trying to be fun and sit there. I don't even have <laughs> it. So, <laughs> no promise. Oh, my God. That's so funny. Yeah. Not interesting. <laughs> okay, yeah. so let's move on. So, yeah. <sighs> okay, so everything that kind of went down, but when did you start noticing that Monica was not really your friend? Um, that's a good question because I was so in it mm -hmm. that I don't really, I don't even know how to explain what my what I'm trying to say, but I was so in it with her that. I, she would always do little shit, but it never, it was never blatant. It was never, bitch, fuck you. you well, yeah, sometimes it was bitch, fuck you, but it was also that for me too. So like, we would fight like that. Um, and she'd be like, we're sisters. We're like sisters. We fight like that. Sisters fight like that. I'm like, bitch, sisters don't fight like that. But, um, but yeah, no, I there's nothing really in my mind that stands out of like when we like did I ever know that she wasn't who she was? No, I I was so in the thick of it with her that I was just like, this is just her. It's just her. Like mm -hmm. I didn't think that I would ever be on the receiving end of her. You know what I mean? But it was I would be like, Well, it's just Monica. What am I supposed to say? You know what I mean? Does right. that make any sense? No, that definitely makes sense because I feel like sometimes, you know, you we see how other people move and we would think that it would never happen to us. They would never, oh, this person would never do this to me. This person would never, you know, try to play me. And yeah. unfortunately, you know, the person who act the fool or act the ass is going to be that same type of person to, you know, going to do the same thing to you, unfortunately. Yeah. So I definitely feel that. So, um, so after the breakdown, okay, wait, so I had another question. So is there anything else before I get to, I guess, you going down, um, have that conversation with Heather? Is there anything else that you want the audience to know between the breakdown of you and Monica? Um, the breakdown is pretty self, no, there's, yeah. I mean, no, there's nothing to really go into with that. I just, we just don't, we just didn't align. And mm -hmm. even when I. And I wasn't like, fuck you, bitch. Da, da. No, it was nothing like that. It was simply a very eloquent, well put explanation and very thorough of my thoughts of, hey, girl, 
uh, I didn't say, hey, girl. I was more like, I'm very disappointed that you feel like you need to lie, like type of thing. Anyways, I'm not going to get into the message, but um, it wasn't a, it wasn't, uh, I didn't end it on a hateful note. So for all of the things that happened during the season that happened, like her trying to get me fired and all that, it didn't make any sense to me because I was like, wait, what did I, what did I do to her? You know what I mean? Like the things that were coming back to me that she was doing, I was like, what did I ever do to warrant that? Mm-hmm. You know, I never understood it. So I was I was baffled for a long time about why she was doing what she was doing. But like I said, we were friends even through like his Easter party when she fell down those stairs. She calls me <laughs> like boohooing, you know, like um like, Baby, because that was that episode went viral with her and her mother. People don't really like the relationship between Monica and her mother. They have a really toxic relationship. That's real life, but I'm not gonna speak on it because mm-hmm. I'm not gonna okay. speak. Cool. Yes. It's not my mother, and I would never talk to my mom like that. So that's just that. Child. <laughs> <laughs> um, shout out to Catherine. Hi, Catherine. So um, well, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Catherine, she said, Tanisha, can you please read Carlos King for Phil? Now, Catherine, stop being a, this is one of our, this is one of our moderators slash subbies. Catherine, stop being messy. Girl, she being messy. <laughs> hey. Um, let's go ahead and read somebody. I'm going to read one comment for you. Um, one comment asks, Tanisha, have you seen or noticed Monica stealing? She probably stole from Meredith's store and people think she stole Lisa Ring. I'm not going to speak on that. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Norma asks, people want to know if Bravo knew about the IG page. Well, clearly, they, think, eventually they knew, right? Uh, I don't think they did until, until Tether. Tether, okay. Okay. So, let's go ahead and get into but it. I don't know, but, I mean, unless you told them, I never said anything mm-hmm. until that. Got you, got you. Okay, so let's get into where you having a conversation with Heather. So did Heather, you know, had a con- did she confront you or you just like, hey Heather, let's have a conversation, girl? How did that go? <sighs> if you want to, do you want to talk about it or? Yeah, I'll talk about it. Okay, um, it's an open space. Whatever you want to talk about. About this, but I'm sure I'll deal with it as. <laughs> um. So, ugh, okay. So the way that it came up with Heather is uh, the morning before they left to Bermuda, or maybe the night before they left to Bermuda, I was at her house doing her hair, and we had a very intense conversation. Um, and in that conversation, she was like, Something's up. I don't know what it is. Are you? Uh, she was just like, "Are you and Monica in cahoots?" Because at this point, when they were going to Bermuda, I think they went to Bermuda in like, I want to say May or I don't know something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say it was May, but I don't know. Um, so we had not been friends for a couple months at this point, but. I never talked to Heather about Monica. (laughs) So Heather didn't know where I actually stood with Monica. So she asked me, did you, do you, are you a Monica plotting against me type thing? Mm -hmm. Like, like, is there anything that I should expect from reunion or from not from reunion? Is there anything that I should expect from, um, this trip, like, is she gonna blindside me with anything? And I was like, honestly, Heather, I have no fucking clue. I have not talked to this girl in months. Uh, I don't put nothing past her though. Like, I just have no clue what, you know, I, I, I'm not in cahoots with the girl. We were, but it was a very intense conversation. We were literally crying and it was just, uh, she's like, I wanna believe you, I believe you, I wanna trust you and I do trust you and you know, I'm not going to get into the more details of that, but it was a kind of intense conversation. Mm-hmm. And then, oof, the guilt that I felt in my throat was heavy. Mm. Knowing what I knew, um, 
knowing that I had stopped, told Monica to stop for a year, told her to stop running that page. And I try to tell her like, it's, it's done. Like you're on the show, like, like just delete it. She's like, it's going to be obvious if I delete it now, because now I'm on the show and then, then it's gone. So she didn't want to delete it. She didn't want to delete it. So, and in this, in my mind, I still have this weird sense of loyalty to her of like, Ugh, I don't want to rat her out. I don't want to rat the people involved out. I just, I was so torn about even like saying it. Mm -hmm. So when I left her house, I, I text somebody. I said, hey, I've been holding a secret and I need to know if you think I should say something to Heather or if you think I should just let her enjoy her trip. And then freaking um, the person that I text, who is also a mutual of me and Heather, was like, I hear what you're saying. I understand your hesitation, but she's like, take a night to sleep on it. But yeah, I think you should eventually tell her. And so I was like, mm -hmm. so I did sleep on it. I didn't like say anything. I just, I was like, Ugh. it was just, it was bad. So I, then I called Heather and told her, Oh, I text her and said, hey, can you, are you free to talk? Or something along those lines. And then she was like, yeah, what's up? And I was like, okay. So then she called me and I told her. And that's how it was. And that's, and that's the scene that we've seen in the season finale with Heather was like, oh my God, are you serious? And I don't know if that was me or if that was, because she does have, um, yeah. so she got it verified, like what I was saying. And Heather was hesitant to believe me at first. So <laughs> Heather was not like, you're right. Like she it was nothing like that. Heather, Heather was very skeptical because I think at that point we all knew what Monica was capable of. Um, so Heather was, and she knew that I was like this with her. Right. Or so we thought like that with her at one point. So she was like, show me the risk. So then I had to like start finding like receipts and proof. I totally told like my involvement with everything. I told her I was just a full, it was a full transparency conversation. Um, and then I don't, so I don't know if that call was, I don't, it was, I don't know. I don't know if that was me or the meta people that confirmed that the show, that the, that the page was what it was. Okay. But yeah. So that's how that went down. And then Heather got back from Bermuda and she said, Tanisha, it was bad. And I said, okay. And that was the scene that they was all going at um, at it and at dinner. Yeah. And even then, Heather didn't tell me the details of what happened. She just said it was bad. And I just was like, uh, you know, I just, what can I do? I have to be apologetic. I have to, at this point, I'm, it, it is what it is. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, so that's how that went down with Heather. Gotcha. Because mm -hmm. baby, Heather ate. Um, Heather, I think that, you know, I think everybody kind of pulled their weight in. Well, let me not say that. <sighs> Sorry, from a viewer perspective, Heather, I was so <laughs> insane. I was like, whoa, Heather was going off, baby. I don't know if she had Patron, tequila, or something, but she was going. In. And that beach scene when she called when all the OGs met on the beach, Ooh. that was a very iconic scene. And the way that how Heather broke it down in her confessionals, I was like, girl, yes, it was everything. It was everything. I know the situation was messy as hell. And kudos to you, and but it wasn't mm -hmm. even be like a messy situation. It was literally intended. I just felt like a fucking asshole. Mm -hmm. like the biggest piece of shit because I knew what I was holding. I knew that I knew that this girl wouldn't stop. I knew that she was literally in Jen's neighborhood all the time. Felt like Ann Park City. Um, I knew these things and I never said anything. But I just like when she would ask me for Heather's address, I just wouldn't respond. Mm -hmm. or, you know. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was definitely a lot. I think that um, 
kudos to you for you know just backing up everything with your receipts because i mean yeah i get where heather was coming from with the whole situation because it's like okay i'm really close with tanisha we have a close relationship she's my hairstylist but then also the whole situation with monica because at this time if y'all didn't know monica was already having issues with damn near the whole cast already because they didn't <laughs> Especially Lisa, child. <laughs> Lisa did not do Lisa do never like Monica. Okay. <laughs> she never liked Monica, honey. Uh -huh. But uh, <laughs> but, uh <laughs> I said Lisa eat her ass up because not her walking around with orange ass fingers too from her spray tan. Girl, bye. <laughs> Chill. But um, but yes, yeah, so it was just like a whole crazy situation. So that's when Heather was going off all the girls met on a beef scene, the dramatic ass music. I said, who was the producer for who was the producer? Because can I be a part of the production team? Because y'all did that with the dramatic music, you know. I'm a producer for how to sing. But uh it was really good. And then the situation where Heather confronted Monica, okay, and Monica said, Yes, I did it, but basically threw you completely under the brush. Um, yeah. the bridge. Oh, it was Tanisha. Tanisha. And I know what, based on our conversation we had involvement of all the people. Like, it's actually crazy. And it was a group. Of, I mean, it was a group. It was more it than was, it was like about it was well, in, in a group chat, but it was definitely two people running the page and one of them two was not me. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And I literally, yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot. It's, it's defamation to me and slander. Yeah, now, like I said, we have I and I, I, you know, I did a deep dive into the receipts. We have all the receipts. Now we could have really, we could really shut this live down and get the receipts. Ooh! I have voice recordings. I have video. I, oh my God. Like, we'll be here all day, and I just it's a lot. It, okay, we might have to come back to play all the receipts another time, but. I just want we'll, to kind we'll of get the burn book as we'll see what the burn book says. We'll, we'll yeah, we'll probably come back. Maybe we can come Ooh, back after. We'll get published so we can both get paid. You said what? I said please let that burn book get published so we can both get paid. 50 okay. 50. Period. Because that's what we're waiting on, y'all. Um, we're waiting for the reunion when Monica come with that big ass burn book to debunk everything that was in her burn book so that's why we're not really showing anything now i just wanted to kind of get tanisha's story um and the backstory of how tanisha name was all up in this mix yeah so so you know at this point the girls ain't really fucking with monica they ain't fucking with her like if, that the, you, know they, saying, you know and i know a lot of fans <laughs> really they're calling monica <laughs> iconic and a stan and everything i'm um, glad Photo shoot makes you iconic, baby. Eat it up, she eat it up. I mean, it you is. are done. You did nothing. You have no job. You have not had a job since I've known you, but you are iconic, honey. Oh, my, my, my. Ooh, wow. child. Ooh, child. She, when, I guess, when people say she's iconic, she scammed her way into the group of women. So, Maybe. Um, I don't know, but let me stop. Know. Look. However, she got in there. However, she, she made it. <laughs> hey, okay, look, honey, look. It's, I, you I, I prayed the most prosperous possible season five. Wow. If she's or whatever, listen, whatever her outcome is, I pray that she slays, and I pray that the universe gives her exactly what she wants and needs and deserves. Child, but mostly, I pray that the universe gives her what she deserves. Mm. So we're going to go ahead and close out. But before we oh! actually close out. Close um, out. Are you, are you ready to close out? I'm ready. Okay. Before we actually close out, Tadisha, can you explain, like, how is your relationship with the women on the show? Ooh. Uh, I don't think I want to say. Okay. You don't want to, you know, you'll, you'll pass. Okay. I think I'll, Heather are great. Okay. Yeah. Me and Heather are great. Um, no, I, I guess I'll say it. I don't have no real contention with anybody except for Monica, personally. Mm -hmm. If they have contention with me, then they do, but I don't think, from what I understand, and no, I don't think there's any contention with majority of the people. Yeah. If not majority, 
majority? A few. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, really and truly, let's let's be honest. How I feel about me is not my business. My business is doing hair, taking care of my child, and going the fuck to sleep on time. And drinking the water, minding your business. Drinking my water, minding my business, hitting Pilates when I can, and enjoying that. Um, outside of that, honestly, all that other business is none of mine. And I'm going to continue to work. I'm going to continue to grind like I've been doing. I'm going to continue to work on the clientele that is still going to be booking me, which I'm grateful for. Um, I'm also going to just be doing what I know how to do. You know what I mean? Um, and defending myself in the process. So. Absolutely. And just shout out to you, Tanisha, for actually being real and keeping it 100. You know, rather the, you know, rather it might be popular or not, I do appreciate it because some people can come up here. Oh, no, I do not. No, no, no. What well, is me? No. But you actually kept it real. And he was like, hey, yeah, like, okay, beginning the part, I did have. You know, I was there when it all I was there when it all happened. And just thank you for being honest and transparent about that. Yeah. You know absolutely. What I mean? Because a lot of people will still lie and BS their way out. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Go ahead. That's it. I was just oh yeah. So okay. no, no, definitely thank you for taking the time out to interview with me. This was a great interview. I think my prayer is that people would because sometimes okay, let me go back. Sometimes we are in things where people don't really have a voice or, you know, like you, you're not on the show. I mean, you you do Heather's hair. So yeah. sometimes yep. a narrative might be pushed on a national syndicated TV show with millions of people watching and they haven't even heard the other side of the story. So thank you for sitting down with me today and expressing your side of the story of what happened on this explosive season finale. Um you know, this is a good, This I think this was a great interview. And I think that you really carried yourself very well. I think you took responsibility. You took, I mean, you took accountability. And I also think that um, this was a good interview. I enjoyed it. I really did. So thank you so much. Do you have any last words that you want anybody to know? Or where can people, you know, hit you up at? Um, The negativity in my DMs. It, I love it only because... It's not my business. I don't care. <laughs> uh, the people who are showing me love, thank you. Um, I mean, it's a truthful story. I don't know. You know, I don't know. It is what it is. You know, I, once again, I'll publicly apologize to the other women for my involvement, um, my knowledge of it, um, and my not stopping it. Um, I hope that I don't know. I don't know what I hope for, but yeah. I feel that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Do you want to let everybody know where they can reach out to you? Are you good? <laughs> it's me. I my Instagram, but let me um I think that shout out to Jess Patches. Um, thank you, Jess Patches, for putting everything out here. You could just reach out to Nisha um Instagram here. Um okay. Tanisha's underscore style so just follow her. she's a dope she's dope y'all she she done she's she good at what she do okay yeah. she's really dope so shout out to you girl but with that yeah. being said we're going to go ahead and head out of here i hope y'all enjoy y'all wednesday okay oh is it wednesday yeah i think married at is on my kind of reality tv <laughs> 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 well guys thank y'all so much for tuning in okay and we're gonna head out of here peace and hey. love hey. oh and make sure to subscribe and sh make sure to share like share subscribe the video just uh, subscribe to the content i'll be posting more content coming your way okay this was an exclusive interview tanisha thank you for this excuse exclusive yeah. and we're gonna head out <laughs> bye bye